Welcome to another video on the Inside Spurs channel. Happy Friday afternoon. Hope well. Hope you're enjoying the day. It's a, it's a pretty damn good day out there today. If you're enjoying it, if you've got the day off, enjoy it. If you're at work, don't worry. It's not much longer. It's half one, so it's not much longer, and then you're done and can enjoy your weekend. We're talking in this video around, obviously, the 12.30 kickoff tomorrow, away to Newcastle, the massive game to set off the weekend. So we'll be talking a little bit about that game. We do have a bit of a interesting update surrounding uh, Papi Matassar and his homegrown situation. So we'll be talking a little bit about that, as well as interest in Piero Hincapi. You're going to want to kick around for that. But anyway, I just want to say, if you're new, Give us a subscribe. You're very much welcome to join us for the journey. And let me start with uh, the Newcastle game, first and foremost, because that's the most important thing, alongside maybe the Papa Matassar. Um, obviously, this is a game where we are now only a handful of games till the end of the season. Spurs sitting in fourth currently. You know, a win just stretches that that little bit further. Obviously, Villa playing Arsenal this weekend, so massive game in, well, the title race and the top four race, really, because of that. But it's a game that Spurs can't lose. That's where I'll sum it up. You know, winning obviously be incredible, but we cannot lose this game because I don't see Villa obviously beating Arsenal, but you know, you never know. You might get a little draw, and that's why we cannot let this game slip by. I know we still have the game in hand, I get that, but we can't let this game slip by. Because if you were to you if you were to win this game, if Villa were to lose, and you win your game in hand, you're now six points clear of Villa on just that. Just on that, obviously, I know there's games in between things that like that of the of the um, extra game, obviously being Arsenal or home. But what I'm saying is, on just on those two games, six points is massive. So, look, it's a really, really important game. When we look at, um, let's have a look at where the guys are in terms of this season. So Spurs sitting in fourth, as I just said, and uh, Newcastle sitting in eighth, thirteen points behind us. Newcastle for them, I mean, when you look at this situation. You're looking at a situation where they are two points behind New uh, Man United in the race for Europa League. They are one point behind West Ham with a game in hand, and and I think I think that's for Europa League. If we do get the extra spot in the Champions League, to give you an update on that, by the way, we have now slipped to third in the race for the extra place of the Champions League. So fifth would no longer be Champions League. That would be back to Europa League. Um, basically because Liverpool got absolutely mullered by Atalanta yesterday. West Ham got pulverised by uh, Leverkusen. Um, and obviously Dor Dortmund and well Bayern obviously getting a draw against Arsenal, but Dortmund are in the Champions League. Um, they're their three German teams. Obviously the Italian league looks like it's going to get an extra place regardless. It, it'll be most likely England and Germany fighting for the second spot. But look, they're a team that um, this season, look, they they scored. They've scored as many goals as we have Newcastle season. There's sixty five, but they've also conceded seven more goals than us. Uh, so they scored. They conceded fifty two times this season to our forty five. So we're seven point seven goal difference better off than we, uh, than we are than them. This is this is massive as well because you think of goal difference. You know, let's say if Villa lost by two against Arsenal, they dropped fifteen on goal difference. Let's say we. If we even if we drew, we then have a five five goal difference better as well as being a point clear with a game in hand. Which, when you're a point clear and you have a goal difference that's better, it's like being two points clear. That's that's what I mean. So this is why now every goal is so important. Conceding and scoring, it's so important. Um, so that that's that. I mean, when we last played them, this uh, last season away to Newcastle was probably one of the worst games. A Spurs fan can remember in recent times, it was a 6-1 loss. We were 5-0 down after 21 minutes. Um, we drew the second half. We did drew the second half. Um, but look, it's, it's one of those ones where we're going to be in for a bit of a, a bit of a dogfight tomorrow. You know, they've got a lot of injuries, but that hasn't... I mean, last weekend, they got a 1-0 win away to Fulham and we lost 3-0 away to Fulham. So, you know, I'm not going to count our chickens here, you know, because or count a hens or whatever the saying is, because Newcastle are a team that give Spurs issues. Obviously, this season we played, we uh, we won 4-1 at home. Um, goals from Adogi, Richarlison getting a double, and uh, Human Song getting Spurs' only penalty this season. And obviously, Joe Linton getting a 91st-minute consolation. I mean, look, one penalty this season. You know what I think about that. It's farcical, farcical. 
But no, we that was one of the games that I, I we watched Spurs and we thought that's tangible because it'd been a little while since we had seen that and, and it was you know fantastic. Looking at teams, look, we didn't have Mickey Van Aven that day. Obviously, still injured from the hamstring he injured against Chelsea. So Vic was in goal, Porro, Adogi at fullbacks, Romero and Davies at centre half. Midfield three of Kulisevsky, Basuma and Saar. And then it was Johnson and Sonny on the wings with Richarlison through the centre. So, look, we're going to be in a strong position this game. I mean, look, we had Dorrington, Belize, uh, Donnelly all on the bench. You know, there wasn't many options, that's for sure. You know, this time we're going to have a lot, lot more to work with, which is very, very good. Liberty News. To really quickly chat about. Um, so, Anne just said that Richardson is out for this weekend. He thought he might be back, but they th I think they're just saving him because look, we've got a two-week break now after this, leading into the North London derby. So, he's going to give him the sort of the time to get himself fit. And uh, Rowan's going to Newcastle. Bear with me. They're missing Nick Pope, Kieran Trippier, Tino Liveramento, Sven Botman, Jamal Sells, Matt Target, Sandro Tonali, Joel Linton, Joe Willock, Lewis Miley, Miguel Amaron. Callum Wilson and Lewis Hall hasn't trained all week. I mean, you look at that. Pope's the starting goalkeeper. R Trips and Livermento are their starting fullbacks. Botman and Lascelles have been their starting centre backs for recent times. Obviously, Tonali's their big summer signing, obviously, because of the betting scandal. Um, Joel Linton is one of their main midfielders. Joe Willock gets good minutes. Lewis Marley's played a lot of football this year. Migo Amron's played a lot of football at right wing. Wilson's been playing some good levels of football. So, look. It's 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 a lot, and and if I'm if I'm brutally honest, if we're gonna win any, if we're gonna win away at Newcastle, this is the gimme of the game when they're missing this many players. You know, they they will probably sit back a bit more. They'll probably welcome on a bit of bit of pressure. And it'll be down to you know your Madisons and your and your Sonnies and your Timos and your Johnsons to to break the deadlock because I think we're gonna have a lot of the ball. And we've got to use it properly. We've got to use it properly. You know, this is one of the fittest teams we've had all season in terms of lacking of injuries. I know Richarlison's out. I know, you know, Manor Solomon and Sessignon and those kind of guys. But, you know, when you think about it, Vicks and Goal, Adogi and Poro be your fullbacks. Your centre half will be Mickey and Kuti. Your midfield three, I mean, Madison. I'm struggling, but, you know, will it, will it be, will Hoybier come in? I'll say Basuma, but I think maybe Hoyberg might come in. And then it'll be Saar or Benzikor, one of the two. And then your front three, I'll probably think it'll be Timo Werner, it'll be Johnson, it'll be Sonny. Because, well, do you know what? Those are two attacking wingers recently have been causing some issues for other teams. And, well, Sonny's obviously the only real striker we've got. So Kulisevsky should be on the bench. So, look, I'm going to. I'm actually going to go as two-all. I really do think it's going to be one of those horrific games where we should win, but we don't win. And I think it'll be two-all, personally. Let's talk Pape Matasar. And it came from Alistair Gold, who said, an update on the Pape Matasar homegrown or not saga. Having spoken to relevant people, it appears he can't be registered as homegrown next season in either the Premier League or European competition. So, this might have this might open the door to your Jamie Donnellys of this world, where you kind of go, look, we're going to have to now bring in at least an academy player for the homegrown you know, for the academy trained as well, which obviously is important. And I don't hate that, to be honest. I, I've always said every season I'd like a new academy player brought into the first team. You know, it's more how Man City have done it for years. You think of Foden and Cole Palmer and Oscar Bob and Lewis at right back. You know, you think of you think of uh, Arsenal have had, you know, Nketiah's in there, you have Reese Nelson that's in there, Ethan New Newery, I don't know how to say his last name, apologies. He's coming through, Saka, obviously. When you now look at Spurs, I think, you know, you've got Jamie Donnelly that's, you know, killing it in the other divisions, you know. And obviously, you won't have as many academy players with, like, yeah, Nashley Phillips and things like that. But I just think with Donnelly doing that, I wouldn't mind Donnelly being with the first team next season, being on the bench consistently. You know, getting the odd 20, 30 minutes, because I think that would really benefit him, you know. Playing in the Carling Cup games, playing in those games where, look, let's sink or swim. Has he got it in or not? The only way to find out is actually trying him out. So... This may open the door for a, a Jamie Donnelly to come in, you know. So we shall see. And then, yeah, to finish off with Pierre Hincap, he said, Kendra Ekram Kano said that Tottenham, Newcastle, Liverpool, and Arsenal continue to be linked with Bayer Leverkusen's Ecuadorian defender 
Piero Hincapi. Now, I have spoken about Hincapi when we were just about to sign Clement Longley. I did a comparison video between Clement Longley, Hincapi himself, and Evan Indico, who obviously is now at Roma. And I remember saying, you know, Longley's probably better on the ball. And I think Longley on the ball is obviously very good defensively. Ooh, that's another story. And I think I I, I think I remember saying Hincapi and Evan and Dicker are much better defenders than they are. Hincapi this season, obviously, playing for Leverkusen, who are frying, frying the Bundesliga. You know, this season he's played one minute short of 2,000 minutes in the Bundesliga. He plays a little bit of centre-half, plays a little bit of left-back. He is left-footed. Um, I don't think he comes cheap, though. I mean, he's 22 years old, not long 22 I think it's going to cost 50 to 60 million. I do. And are Spurs doing that for a fullback? No. Simple as that. They're not going to. Um, I think Spurs have bigger fish to fry in the team than another centre back for that kind of money. I think, you know, when you look at the the left winger, the central midfielder, you know, maybe another striker, I think that's where more money is going to be spent because I think it's in the area of need more than a centre back would be, if you get what I mean. Good player though, but, you know. I, I, look, if they were like, we're going to get him, I'd be like, oh no, what a shame. He's a, he's a very talented player. I'd love to have Pierre Hincapi. And there you go. There's your four centre backs that you've got. I mean, Pierre Hincapi's 22. Radu's around a similar age. So is Mickey. I mean, Cootie's a few years older, but Cootie's not exactly old. He's in his mid twenties. Centre backs sorted for years. Don't have to worry about it. But we shall see. But anyway, guys, at the end of the video, I hope you did enjoy it. Drop a like on the video if you did. Hit me in the comment section your thoughts and feelings about the game tomorrow, your predictions, all that jazz. Obviously, your thoughts and feelings about the Pepper Matasar hunger situation and my idea of, you know, maybe maybe a Donnelly now being more more likely to be with the first team squad next season. And obviously, your thoughts and feelings about Pierre Hincapi and what, you know, would you want him? If you do want him, where do you think that issue may lie elsewhere in terms of maybe not getting someone else? I know you'll let me know. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and hit the bell notification for more. But guys, in the video, and I will see you all very, very soon. Take care, guys.